Hey guys, this is Nir Palm from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now today I'm reviewing the Sony ZV-E1. This is a video focused full frame camera from Sony that just came out in March and it's unlike any camera that I've reviewed before. So I just got done diving with it in the Sea of Cortez with sea lions, uh, whale sharks, a lot of blennies and nudibranchs. Um, I had an awesome time there with a great group of people. Uh, but what was interesting was I brought this camera along and this is basically a mini Sony a7S III or a Sony FX3 uh, inside of an APS-C sized body. Now with that, Sony's also updated the body uh, with some new AI features and a new AI autofocus processor just like the Sony a7R5 that came out recently earlier this year. So now we've got a video centric tiny little camera that's perfect for underwater videography uh, with a lot of the new exciting features that we got from the a7R5 for photography. So this camera is designed very differently than the a7S III, the FX3. Uh, it does have some limitations for underwater video. It's not for everybody, but it is for some people and it works very well. Uh, as you can see, it's a tiny little camera. It's got some tiny housing options. Um, considering that it can take 4K video up to 120 frames per second, 4K 60 10-bit uh, raw video, and it has built-in AI features that I think are really, really neat. Now, before I get into this review, make sure you drop us a like below. Uh, that'll help us get the video to other underwater videographers out there. And if you like our content, make sure you subscribe uh, as you'll get more tutorials, reviews, and other great stuff for any kind of underwater shooter, whether you're a videographer or a photographer. So jumping back into the review, let's start with some basic specs from the camera. So the sensor on the ZV-E1 is a full frame sensor, which is pretty amazing considering the size of this camera. Uh, this body is very reminiscent of the Sony A6000 series, which is an APS-C uh, lineup with smaller sensors, but they managed to fit a full frame sensor into such a small camera. The sensor is capable of 4K video up to 120 frames per second. Of course, 4K 60, 10 bit. Uh, it, it's capable of multiple log profiles, S-Log3, um, Cinetone, uh, pretty much anything that you would need for color grading and making sure you get as much detail out of your shadows and highlights as possible. Uh, it's got lots of cool new built-in software. It's got an AI auto framing mechanism. It has the ability to download LUTs onto the uh, camera itself so that you can view your log footage as it would look if it was color graded um, and it has a new dynamic active steady shot stabilization mode uh, which is one step further than active steady shot uh, stabilization but with a crop. So let's take a look at some of my underwater tests uh, as I explain a little bit more about this camera uh, and what it can do. Starting with the video quality. So as I mentioned, the ZV-E1 has the same 12 megapixel sensor found on the Sony a7S III and the Sony FX3. Uh, because of that, you can expect the same great performance that you found on both of those cameras as well. Um, and I found that to be true in a lot of my underwater video. The dynamic range was excellent. The details are amazing. Uh, with some of the newer Sony lenses, like the uh, 16 to 35 power zoom, I really, really just was 
super impressed with the quality that comes out of this little camera. Uh, because it is a 12 megapixel sensor, each pixel is a little bit larger than it would be on an APS-C camera or a crop sensor camera, which is why it performs so well in low light conditions. So I made sure to test the ZV-E1 in very low light conditions while I was diving in the Sea of Cortez with limited visibility uh, in the morning or the afternoons. And I pushed the camera up to 12,800, which is actually the second base ISO uh, value when you're shooting in S-Log3. So with my S-Log3 footage, I was able to see, okay, how much noise is there at 12,800 versus how much noise is there at 10,000 uh, or at even low ISOs. I was really impressed with how far I could push the camera. Uh, when it comes to those higher ISOs, it has the same great performance as the A7S III. Um, and feel free to refer back to my A7S III review uh, so that you can take a look at the quality there as well. Now, there's a few things that have been added, like I said, in the ZV-E1 that have also improved the performance and quality of my video. The main being uh, the dynamic active steady shot stabilization mode. So it used to be that active steady shot stabilization was the best stabilization mode that Sony cameras had to offer. Well, the ZV-E1 came equipped with a 30% crop that adds digital stabilization to the in-body image stabilization that's being used in active steady shot stabilization. Now they call it dynamic active steady shot stabilization, which is a tongue twister. It's a little bit hard to say, as you can see. Um, I found it worked great. I was filming sea lines. I did need a little bit of that 30% crop, that extra reach to get some of the sea lines, which were a little bit farther out. So for me, 30% was not a problem. Uh, for some others, if you're trying to get really close to subjects, you might want to take it off dynamic active uh, just so that you don't have that crop. Uh, but like I said, for me, that was fine. And I actually did a stabilization test, as you can see right here, uh, where you can see without stabilization just how shaky video can be. I'm taking the camera, I'm moving it, uh, I'm actually pointing it towards myself and I'm shaking it just to show you, okay, this is shaky footage. And you can see how well Dynamic Active Steady Shot actually perfects that footage and smooths it out. So I was really, really impressed. Now, Dynamic Active Steady Shot Stabilization is not included uh, when you are shooting 4K 120. So if you need to shoot 4K 120, that's great. You can slow down and you can really stabilize your footage with higher frame rates, uh, but you won't be able to use dynamic active steady shot. That's only for 4K 60 and below, which was not a problem for me. With C lines, you don't really want to always use 4K 120. It's nice to have 4K 60, slow it down a bit, um, and have just a little bit more stabilization from the digital stabilization. So overall, I was pretty stoked about that. I think it's a great feature, and it's actually a good improvement over the A7S 3 or the FX3. Would I upgrade from the A7S 3 or the FX3 just for that? Probably not. It's a big investment for the same sense and quality. Now, with that being the major improvement over the a7S III, I should talk about some of the drawbacks from the a7S III. So as you can see in the small body size, there is no built-in fan. Now, it's great to have a really small camera, but because there's no built-in fan and the body's a little bit smaller, the ZV-E1 does tend to overheat quicker than the a7S III. Uh, in my test with the a7S III, I've been finding that in really warm water conditions, around 80 degrees, uh, I could get about seven to 20 minutes of 4K 120. Well, you can expect maybe about a third of that uh, if you're gonna shoot 4K 120 on the ZV-E1. So only really plan on a few minutes of shooting with the ZV-E1 in 4K 120. Now, I was hearing horror stories about shooting in 4K 60 and hearing that the camera overheats in that case. I personally didn't find that to be an issue. I was diving in 86 degree water. I shot 4K 60 for up to 10, 20 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes total during a dive and I found that the camera cooled off and I was able to shoot uh, Well enough through a full dive and not have any issues with overheating and finally the camera is built in with a single uh, SD card slot which unfortunately does not give you the capability of having a, a backup while you're shooting now The battery on the camera is the new uh, Z battery, which is a higher capacity battery So it's not like other smaller Sony bodies which had smaller batteries However, I did find the battery life was actually quite poor with the ZV-E1. So when I was diving, uh, my camera would last about two dives, uh, but I wasn't shooting heavy video. I feel like if you're shooting heavy video all the time, uh, your camera would last maybe one, one and a half dives. Um, so I do recommend having a few spare batteries and plan on uh, changing out the batteries on the camera. Uh, one of the nice 
kind of things that you can get for an Eichelite housing uh, is an external USB-C port uh, where you can charge the camera via USB-C um, through the bulkhead on the housing. So if you're interested in that, make sure you reach out to us at Blue Water Photo Store. That way you can charge your camera without taking it out of the housing uh, in between dives, which is pretty useful. So let's move on from our conversation about uh, image quality and stabilization and talk about some of the cool software features found in the ZV-E1. Uh, one of my favorites is the user installed LUTs. Uh, for those of you that don't know what a LUT or lookup table is, when you shoot an S-Log3 or Cinetone, everything will look as it would be uh, if you were shooting um, color graded footage. So ultimately this makes it easy to film in log profiles, but later on, once you put it back on your processor, you can go ahead and process the files to your heart's desire, fix that white balance, fix those details, uh, fix that contrast and get the perfect video. Another software feature that I tried out that I was pretty excited for and was a little bit disappointed by was the AI uh, auto framing feature. I found that it worked great topside with people, uh, but it didn't work as well underwater with fish and uh, subjects like that. Now that's fine for me. The autofocus system is so good on this camera that I was fine just using the animal eye autofocus tracking and all the typical autofocus uh, features that you can find on the most modern Sony cameras. Uh, it would have been cool to have auto framing work as well, um, but I just couldn't get it to work. If you guys find that there's situations underwater where the auto framing does work, uh, feel free to drop that in the comments below. I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys experience. And finally, that brings me to my favorite software feature, which is always when it comes to Sony autofocus. Uh, like I said before, the ZV-E1 has the same AI autofocus processor that the A7R5 did, uh, which means that it's got the same incredible AI autofocus system as the A7R5. So I kept the camera in subject detection mode for animals the whole time. It did an amazing job capturing sea lions, fish, and pretty much anything I wanted to shoot. I never really had to worry about uh, focus the whole time I was shooting. I just left it in continuous, and it always found my subject, and it got it spot on. So what more can you say for a camera? This camera allows you to focus on composition, which is ultimately what uh, you should really be focusing on and what the art form is when it comes to underwater video. So let's move on to underwater housing and lens options for this camera, uh, because I think it'll show you just how powerful the camera is. As we all know, probably the most important thing in any underwater system is size. And when you look at the options for housings, lenses, and the whole shebang, uh, it's pretty amazing what this camera can do versus the size that you have to carry. So this is the Eichelite housing that I shot in the Sea of Cortez. Uh, it's very small, simple, easy to use. I actually sought this as my secondary camera. So I was also testing the Canon R100 while I was in the water. I would have this tied up with a lanyard uh, to my BCD and have it float beside me uh, in the polycarbonate housing that Eichelite designed. If you don't have any lights or don't have any strobes or anything like that, uh, then this housing will float. So I just had it hooked up, floating behind me, and anytime I wanted to shoot, I would grab it, take my video, and put it back uh, floating right behind me again. I thought that was pretty amazing and, and really fun to be able to shoot professional 4K video uh, anytime I wanted, even while I was taking photos. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Now, the housing itself, uh, does not come with a bulkhead for strobes. Why is that? Because I highly, highly, highly don't recommend this uh, for underwater photography. It won't work with strobes, there's no mechanical shutter. Uh, forget this camera if you're an underwater photographer. I should have said that in the beginning, I apologize. Um, now, moving on, uh, let's take a look at what this housing has uh, built in. So you've got your shutter, which I've actually customized while I was shooting uh, to be my record button, which made it really easy to shoot. You just hit the shutter, it starts recording, you're good to go. Um, you can hit the red record button if you really want to. Now one of the downsides on the ZV-E1 is it only has two dials. So I was able to uh, set one for aperture and one for ISO. My shutter speed, I always keep that at twice my frame rate as a 180 degree shutter, uh, which is fine. Uh, I don't really mind not having the shutter speed dial there. I very rarely change my shutter speed when I'm shooting video. Um, so having two dials made it easy to control um, as both dials were just from the back of the housing. Now, uh, the camera isn't as customizable as the a7S III or the FX30, um, so you do want to keep that in mind, but there are a few buttons that you can customize that Eichelite also gives you control of as well. 
Now the housing comes with a vacuum valve, although the pump is sold separately. That really helps to make sure that you have a good seal before you get in the water. Um, so I think that's a great feature to find in Nike Light housing as well. Now moving on to the Nauticam housing option, which I also I don't have here right now. Uh, the Nauticam option is an anodized aluminum housing option. It's nice and small. Uh, the nice thing about the Nauticam housing is it's compatible with wet lenses. So if you want to shoot it with the 28 to 60 with some of their wet optics, that's a cool option as well. Now my favorite lens that I like shooting with the ZVE one was the new power zoom 16 to 35. I think it's a fantastic lens. One thing that I got wrong on this lens that it's really good to know. Uh, the aperture ring can be locked, which allows you to control the aperture, but you can only control the aperture if the aperture ring is locked. So please remember to do that if you do get the power zoom 16 to 35. There's also an iris mode, which allows you to actually change the aperture as an iris, which is really cool for filmmakers. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit harder for underwater filmmakers unless you have a control ring for that iris right there as well. Um, now, I thought the zoom control worked pretty well. It did a good job of moving in and out. I actually have some of my footage that I filmed underwater where I was actually zooming in and out. And I think it works great as an all around wide angle lens. Uh, so if you're an underwater filmmaker, I'd probably stick with the 16 to 35 F4 power zoom. Now, if you're a macro filmmaker, I would take a look at the Sony 90 millimeter macro. I think it does a great job. It has a lot less focus breathing than the Sigma 105. Uh, one of the cool things about the ZVE one is it actually has focus breathing compensation, which I think is awesome. Uh, now, I didn't really have any problems with focus breathing while I was shooting, but that's something to know. Um, and I think it's a really cool feature of this camera as well. And that really concludes my review of the ZVE one. It's a very interesting camera. It was designed by Sony originally for vloggers. Um, but if you take it underwater, now you've got the perfect underwater camera because it's a small size, uh, it's got new stabilization modes that work great in three-dimensional environments, and probably the only downside is the fact that it will overheat a little bit more than the A7S III or the FX30, which can be an issue for some of you guys out there if you're shooting heavily. So anyway, if you like this video, again, please make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any questions about the ZV-E1 at all, make sure you drop them in the comments below. So with that, I hope to see you guys out there diving with the ZVE-1 and I can't wait to see some of the footage you guys get.